I'm here this week for the Super Bowl World Championship. We're going to have all the best football freestylers in the world on stage battling each other. They go head to head trying to top each other's tricks. So I'm going to introduce you to a few of the guys that have been training all year long for many, many years to try and become the best football freestyler in the world. So, for the Super Bowl World Championship, these players are ranked and then they're seeded according to their level. They're placed into qualifier groups, they have to do the qualification battles, elimination battles, sometimes also additional battles, and eventually they reach the top 32. <laughs> top 32 is where the group battles end. We go 1v1 on stage, the players go back and forth with three rounds, each lasting around 30 seconds. The winners go through to the big final day, which is the top 16. So, for this competition, let me show you who's been ranked as the top 10 players. In at number 10, Tristan from France. France has a really high level in freestyle, and Tristan ranks as their number one. Number nine, Ibuki from Japan. In at number 8, we have Patrick Shaw from the USA. Pat is a rising star in freestyle, and guess what? He's only 19 years old. Number 7, we have Jay Henneke, Australian. I was really surprised, honestly, to be ranked so well because I haven't been at Super Bowl since 2018. And when I was there, I didn't even make the top 32. So even even that is um, amazing to me. Um, so what does your training schedule look like in terms of how many hours, how many days a week? So uh, like many of the top guys, I, I, I did this after I met with Brynja a few years ago because he, he's been a big inspiration for me um, and he told me that he was training twice a day, maybe every day, maybe one, one rest day. So for me it's about 13 sessions a week, two hours a session, but sometimes it's like 1.5 hours, just depends how I feel. Here at number six is Machine from Colombia one of the most unique freestylers in the whole competition. In, the, in this case, in this year, uh, train every day, four, or, four hours, yeah, uh, every day, yeah. In, in, the, in the morning, yeah, in the morning is the room time, room time. Room time? Yeah, my room time. Oh, it's, Maybe, um, it's like yeah, in, in my home, yeah. <laughs> Two sessions. Um, battles twice, once maybe a week. Yeah, battles. Yeah, with Boyka. <laughs> yeah, in I live in the same city with Boyka. <laughs> Up to the top five. This is PWG, aka Philip Warren Gertson. He represents the Philippines. What's up? <laughs> um, your ranking, when we went through the seating, is currently number five. Yeah. If you finished as like a fifth place, a fifth place finish, so top eight, maybe top four, would you be content with that? Or are you really going for the win? I mean, <laughs> this week definitely. Like, I, I would be happy going into top 32, which I actually did. So uh, my initial idea was to not compete at all. Uh, and that's because you're struggling. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a like a really bad hip flexor groin injury uh, that I had for about one and a half month. So uh, yeah, I'd be happy with the top five, definitely. I, I usually train about three hours a day um, with, and then I add like half an hour of stretching and I always walk to my training sessions and I do that every day. Like I don't have rest days and basically I just do whatever I want in, in terms of, you know, my training. So it's not really structured in the same way as I used to do it because 
back in the days I used to train like so hard for Super Bowl I was going to train sets and this and this and that but now I just feel like it's better to just have an arsenal of tricks be confident with those tricks and then do whatever you feel confident with when you're on stage and just impo- you know improvise on stage Number 4 Boyka He's a previous world title winner and our second Colombian on the list Now we're looking at the big favourites for the competition. This is Jesse Marlet from the Netherlands. Yeah, my, my normal schedule looks uh, like everyday training, of course, and uh, mostly four hours and some days of two, so you can get the, the rest the rest in. Uh, mostly I do two, two hours in the morning for more like the technical lowers and difficulty, and the two hours in the night for just exploring and finding, finding new tricks. Here at number two is Norwegian Rinyar Fagerl. Finally, here's your number one, Arland Fogarty from Norway, often pronounced Erland based on the spelling. And yes, you may have guessed it, these top two players are actually brothers. They train together and they've been pushing the limits in freestyle for many, many years. Brynjar has never actually won a world title, Arland has seven. He's won Super Bowl four times. So the question becomes, can anybody stop him this year? I don't have many expectatives for this year. Uh, maybe top 16 is, is perfect for me. Uh, semi-finals, uh, final, for me it's okay. <laughs> I don't know, but my goal is, is top 16, yeah. Okay guys, welcome back to Super Bowl live stream. We had two days of crazy battles, we had qualifications for two days, but this is the round when we separate the men from the boys. Yeah. This is yeah. when it's happening, who is going to the big final on Saturday, I'm hyped. Aaron, it's up to you to choose who's starting, you know this position. You starting, only starting, okay. DJ Scottis in three, two, one. Let's go! All right, Ireland takes so it. Ireland five zeros. This. So we see the title defender on Saturday in the top 16 trying to win again Super Bowl yes. title. Do you come into this competition as your expectation to win or is your expectation something different? Uh, I always uh, reset myself before a competition, so uh, every competition is new, uh, the feeling is new every time, the competitors have new tricks, I also have new tricks, so I'm really just here to show what I got and uh, do my best to, to, beat, to beat the other freestylers. Alright, let's move on to the next battle, uh, Peggy, yes. which is... Let's have a look.
Alright, so we got five judges, right? I don't think this is going to be 5-0 in any direction. No, no. I mean, if it is, then it's just like sheer luck because yes. it's so 50-50 battle. Bailey goes to top 16. Uh, yeah, well, I, had, I saw I had to battle Herman in the top 32. And at the beginning of Super Bowl, this was my goal, you know, to, to reach the top 32. And I didn't go in with any expectations, to be honest. Um, just, yeah, try to enjoy the moment and let's see if I can put him under pressure. Um, and yeah, he started to, to make some little drops. Um, and that's when, yeah, in the end, I got, got the win. Yeah, I had no idea how to respond, to be honest, because this came so out of the blue to me. Um, uh, like I've battled Herman before and he usually always wins, you know, but this time it was different. Um, and it, it it should have felt like good, it should have felt uh, like a win to me, but I couldn't be happy somehow. Like I had so many mixed feelings um, because I just knocked out my very good friend with a very deep uh, connection and um, a friend who I thought could have, you know, surprised uh, the whole audience here at Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, we, we were a bit emotional. Um, we had some tears together, you know, um, that also shows how big our passion is for the sport, how, um, yeah, what our friendship uh, entails, you know, and um, yeah, it was like, for me, this was the most beautiful moment out of Super Bowl. It wasn't winning, it wasn't reaching the top 16, it was that moment with Herman. Um, yeah, I still got goosebumps from it, to be honest. still processing what happened. Uh, a funny story was like in 2019 when he became like uh, this champion of Super Bowl. I was actually in the rookies and I got last in my rookies group. So to come from there to now and beat him in top 32, that's huge, huge thing. <laughs> I've been training a lot and uh, I didn't want to take it personal. I love you and it was just about beating myself, you know, doing the, the, doing the, the stuff I know. I, I didn't want to lose against myself, you know. I had hope to win but I didn't believe it <laughs> either way when it happened <laughs>
machete. Ecco, Ecco, Paolo, Piro, Tire, Cine, Tite. tricks when Anthony pulled out his tricks and people just went crazy and especially when I found out that I won the battle it's like wow I think I'm gonna be facing Brynjar um, it's a great battle he's one of my favorite freestylers one of the best in the world I have nothing to lose I just want to go in there and perform that's it yeah Machine, machine, machine. Ah, no. <laughs> oh, definitely. Everybody knows uh, that, that the Fogarty's uh, every year look strong, uh, and that's why they were in the final last year. So, and we're gonna try to change that. <laughs> no, just uh, yeah. I think those guys, but there are many like sub sub guys who are definitely can give them a hard uh, time and uh, be in the final as well. So, I think. Uh, there's not just one guy to focus on there, like uh, 10 people who could, who could uh, do, something, do something this year. <laughs> For me, Pachau is so strong, so confident. Um, Tristan, maybe Tristan, that level. Uh, Erlen, always, always Erlen. And Jesse, Jesse, Brinjar, maybe. This is my top, top five with Boyka, top seeds, yeah. I mean, obviously Erland, uh, but uh, Machine is looking strong. I really like the, the stuff that he's been doing. Um, I haven't seen Brynjar, but I heard that he was sick, so I, I'm not sure how that is, but he's always, you know, a, a contender as well. Uh, Boyka, obviously, like, we've battled so many times, and it's currently 3-3 between us. Um, I just never want to battle him. Uh, it's just always so difficult but honestly whoever I battle we're, we're just gonna have fun on stage and uh, both do our best and then the, the best man goes through to the next round easy ass I'm sure like many guys will say there's so many amazing guys all in the top 16 so just any, anyone could anyone could take you out at any time I think